Hi folks. So today I'm going to talk about the Internet of Things. Everybody's talking about IoT these days. So what really is the Internet of Things? All right, let's see. So this is what how, how things work. There were things, right? This is something. And this is something. And this is something too. And then there is the internet. Which, what is the internet really? It is a global computer network which can help uh, different nodes to communicate with each other, basically. It runs on many protocols. So, you know, this is something, this is connect through the internet, it can reach this thing, and it can reach this thing. Let's say this thing is called A, and this thing is called B, right? And this thing is called C. <clears throat> okay. So let's see th these all of these things separately. So let's say there is this thing A, there is this thing called internet, and there are these two things called B and C. So what did this thing used to look like? This thing we call A today, right? Let's think about it and let's explore it. So this used to look like, let me select a suitable color. Okay, so let's say somewhere around the 1980s, 1990s, even the early part of 2000, Mostly these things were, basically these things were computers, right? And they were connected to the internet through network gear, like switches, routers, and stuff. So what did people used to do on the computer? You know, they used to do all kinds of stuff. They used to email, they used to browse, when the world, uh, the web browser HTTP protocol and stuff, they came into effect. But the important thing to note is that more often than not, this thing was used by this thing. So this is, is user A, right? So with this thing, of course, is a human being. There's some guy who's watched, sitting behind the computer and who's sending the email, uh, browsing or uploading or downloading the file on the FTP, so on and so forth. And let's say, similarly, these things B and C in the 1980s and the 90s and the 2000s, you know, they were running similar stuff too, right? So let's say user A emails, uh, emails B, so on and so forth, you know, they could uh, send emails to each other, they could transfer files uh, to each other's computers, so on and so forth, using the underlying internet as a common network. <clears throat> but, but this was a typical way it was used, right? Okay. So now let's forward it to the late 2000s, right? So let's say if we were to uh, consider this entire era, which is still in effect, uh, which let's say starts somewhere around 2000, year 2000 and to present. So this area has seen unprecedented growth in many aspects and we'll talk about this so 2000 to the present moment so what really has changed right 
I could easily make the case that there were things using the internet as early as 1980s, if not earlier, and certainly in the 1990s. So why this huge fuss about IoT and its uh, possibilities since last few years only, and, and um, this is accelerating now further. So we'll explore all of that, but before that, let's talk a bit about uh, the internet. Well, what, how is the internet organized? So internet is basically, it runs over a set of protocols. There's a protocol hierarchy, so to say, right? On the lowest level, there is the physical. So there you have to send computer signals, the information that they're carrying, whether it happens to be uh, content of your email, content of the web page you're browsing, content of the file you're sending through FTP, any content. It has to be transferred on the internet, on some physical layer, on some um, channel, so to say. And as we move on top of it, so there is what is typically called a data link layer. And other layers and on the top there is the application layer, whatever uh, is the intended uh, utility. You know, protocols don't exist for nothing. There is always an intent. And that intent is what the application is supposed to do. So this is the protocol hierarchy, right? And this has been very carefully engineered, crafted, uh, going back to, you could study the history of internet and the protocols, TCP, IP, and even the protocols prior to that. Uh, so this is clearly originated in the 1980s, if not early. But let's focus about two aspects which really changed the game. And those two aspects are, which are a relatively recent phenomena. And those two aspects are both related to basically the physical layer. Number one, mobility. Right, mobility. And number two is very high data speeds, very high. As a matter of fact, there is a third aspect too, and that is low cost of hardware. Low cost and a smaller form factor, right? Low cost, and let's add another factor too, small form. Think of your cell phone, for example. It's a full-fledged computer, right? And uh, all right. So these these aspects are really what what all of them are related, basically, to the physical. So let's uh, discuss them one at a time. So mobility. Think of a mobile uh, operator, right? For example, GSM, GPRS, which was. Uh, the provision of packet data service on GSM networks. And these are so-called, uh, let me take this over here. So there are so-called different generations of the uh, telecommunication networks, right? 2G, 1, 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, and yes, you guessed it, 5G. So you often hear the term 5G with IoT, and it's for good reason because of the speed that 5G has to offer and others, other characteristics also, low latency speed, et cetera. But this, all of these aspects are fundamentally tied to mobility. Now you can have mobile phones, sensors, very complex sensors, have a SIM in it, throw them anywhere. There is very uh, pervasive mobile cell phone coverage all across the world. And that gives us the fundamental capability to have all of those small things connected to the internet through this mobile internet primarily. So the mobile internet started as early as in as 2G through GPRS. 
but of course it was very low speed and as time progressed with the, the with the uh, subsequent generations of the telecom networks speed has increased latency by and large has decreased the cost of services has also decreased and all of that is a fundamental factor in enabling the possibilities of internet of things right okay so this is covered i have already mentioned high data speeds low cost so hardware and um, let's think of the cost then so in the 80s the processing power that is required that that is available for example on your average smartphone today i don't think it was uh, it certainly was not possible for the average joe to have access to that kind of computing power right so th the reduce in cost of hardware and service is a key factor likewise the small form factor you you would not want to look at the computers of 80s they had, they were massive they were physically large and hence not conducive to many use cases right you could not throw them around as sensors in an agricultural use case to for example to measure the uh salinity of the soil or the waterfall or the humidity or uh any atmospheric parameter right it was just not possible because of the form factor right now it is it is possible and it's low cost it's pervasive the service is everywhere and the computing power is massive there is another factor too which has helped and that is i'll add it somewhere over here right there is a fifth factor and that is open source software so there is very high quality open source software available for many literally all use cases so the the best poster child for this phenomenon is of course the operating system linux which you'll see running on small uh, very small uh, devices to clusters of supercomputers right all right so this is what it is basically and before i end this i'd like to mention what um uh, what now basically so currently we are living in the era of 5g plus not just human beings but software plus actors let's say and actors do not have to be humans only right there is there has been massive software capabilities that are available now and artificial intelligence has helped many things have helped them right but the net effect is that software can be written to automate many of things um <clears throat> which do not even now require human uh interaction right so this is in a sense why everybody and and you know this is still ongoing right similarly that this is ongoing right so those things have changed they have become smaller they have become more powerful they have become less costly they have access to internet everywhere high speed internet everywhere they have integrations with sensors of every kind think audio sensor speech right video cameras computer vision think atmospheric sensors think gyroscopes even your uh, every smartphone these days they have uh, a sense of orientation a gyroscopic sensor right so it's a killer combination basically the possibilities are uh, for good reason everybody is excited because there's massive possibilities that are going to unfold as we uh, as this thing uh, moves forward and so now i'd like to just before the end i'd mention so what what next basically right so what are we looking at we are looking at telecommunication networks the mobility part 5g and beyond we are looking at availability of low cost sensors low cost hardware 
small form think very small low cost all of that plus open source software and even if not open source the maturity and the capability of software that's available whether open source or not has dramatically increased over the last uh, many decades and that's all available to be used and it will be used it is being used and uh, um, there's a very uh, amongst other factors again the key factor is that the hardware is available now right it's cheaply available so all of this combined together what 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 are we looking at we're looking at and these things are happening uh, let me just change the color so what are we looking at we are looking at new possibilities which were not possible earlier. Possibilities of all kinds, really, you know. Um, and of course, to support those possibilities, there is a new protocol development, design and development effort. Uh, this has been ongoing for the last many years. It will continue. Uh, for example, you know, there are literally many, many protocols now which, which support uh, these new possibilities. CGPP is one of the bodies which is standardizing, you know, even ITF, uh, so on and so forth. But new protocols, new possibilities, new applications. So it's an excited world, uh, exciting new world which has already been set into motion. That, folks, is why even though IoT is uh, somewhat old wine in a new bottle, but the bottle is new after all, right? Uh, there's good reason for all of that excitement. We'll, be, uh, we'll keep covering <coughs> IoT, excuse me, in all its uh, associated dimensions in this uh, channel, uh, from protocols, from the business applications, from the software frameworks, so on and so forth, through the hardware, we'll keep covering all of that. So stay tuned. I'm pretty excited about it. Have a good day. Thank you for watching. Bye.